Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp, who is uh, not... Oh, oh, wait for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait it, for it. He you know what I do, <laughs> is making an entrance today. We ain't bad and we ain't cocky. We rolled on your team like a Kawasaki. Room, room. <laughs> room, room. Wait a second. We ain't bad. Wait a second. What was that? <laughs> The man in the Bronco helmet, the Hall of Famer who played for the Denver Broncos, picked my Cowboys to win the game 34 to 17. I'm going to repeat, 34 to 17, and he's boasting and bragging about a victory Skip. that he did not Skip. predict. Skip, let me get better for you, Skip. Yeah. Okay, good movie. Yeah. Oh, there, 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 Take right. your time, Shannon. How you doing, Take Skip? Take your time. I'm doing great. And by the way, <laughs> boom! Boom, Get a what? shot of that, please. For what? Shannon Sharp just lost three more cases of Diet Mountain Dew to me, thanks to my man Baker Mayfield and my Cleveland Browns. Thank you very much. I mean, Cincinnati <sighs> turned the ball. I mean, come on, skip a pick six, a <sighs> hundred yards. Thank you. If now we're right, even. What about this right here? Yeah. <laughs> that hurt yesterday, didn't it? Yeah, skip? you picked it. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> How much are you doing this right now, Shannon? Honestly, the gloating. I feel it from all the way over here. You had your moment. And yes, the reason that Shannon is in such a good mood this morning (laughs) is because the Cowboys had their six-game winning streak snapped as they lost to Shannon's Broncos 30-16. The Dallas defense came in sixth right against the run and got bulldozed for 190 yards on the ground. And Dak Prescott struggled in his return from injury as he kept overthrowing receivers and also had an interception. So, Shannon, this is your moment. Were the Cowboys overrated? Yeah, but the Cowboys are who we thought they were. Oh, I mean, really? They might have a quarterback controversy if you blew it in Dallas. Mm. Oh, who were right? Yeah. You saw what old Coop did last time. Huh. <laughs> he didn't get to play yesterday. Don't do that. Well, he should have. Yeah. Because the other guy shouldn't have played. Mm. Skip, uh, hmm. Now, I want to know, because Last week, we had a conversation about the defense being better than what they stat said. Mm-hmm. I said, no, Skip. They stats say they're a middle of the pack, slightly mm-hmm. below middle of the pack defense. Mm-hmm. No. Mike McCarthy, and you was echoing, parroting what mm-hmm. Mike McCarthy said. I haven't seen a defense flip so fast mm-hmm. in a year. One side of the ball. One flipped. side of the yeah. ball. Yeah, defense. Flip. Okay. My team. My Broncos, I love my Broncos, Skip, but you know they hadn't scored 20 points in four of the last five games. Mm-hmm. They have had, had not scored 30 points in a game all season long. Mm-hmm. Although they had beaten up on Jacksonville, they had beaten up on the Giants, they beat up on Washington, they hadn't reached 30. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, against a team that defense is better than what their stats would indicate, they ran through them, mm. like Sherman through Atlanta. Mm. And you was, I was like, what? I was like, I was like, what's going on? So I tuned in, Skip, because I looked up. It was 13 nothing before I even finished mm. my breakfast. Mm. And uh, lo and behold, Skip, look, you and I both know you guys are in the, ter- the worst division in football. You feasted on the Giants, and you're going to feast on Washington. You beat Philly. You beat some bottom feeders. You got an impressive victory. I give you credit. The Chargers, you got a victory over them. You beat uh, uh, New England. But other than that, Skip, your record's inflated. You know that, I know that. Now, before I turn it over to you, because I don't want to gloat, because I had my time yesterday. But this is what I want to know, Skip. Why was Dak Prescott in that game with six minutes to go and you're down 30? Because here's what we know. When the score was 27 to nothing, Dak Prescott line was 6 of 19 for 79 yards. When the score reached 30 to nothing, Dak Prescott numbers was 8 of 23 for 102 yards, an interception, and no touchdowns. Then all of a sudden, Dak Prescott comes in, he gets 130 yards and two touchdowns. And everybody's like, but well, Dak didn't play that bad. Dak was awful. And I'm glad, I wonder why you didn't ask me to give him a grade. But I'll go ahead and give him a grade for you, even mm. though you didn't ask for it. You mm. know what he got. Mm. F. Mm. And your Cowboys are who we thought they were. Mm. And the Broncos didn't let them off the hook. Now, you still feel confident you're going to the Super Bowl? Mm. No. I, not, I didn't pick them to go to the Super Bowl. They're not Bowl. going anywhere. Okay. You might win a playoff game. You'll get a playoff game. Because oh, wait, wait. They're going nowhere, but then they might win a playoff game? No, no, no. Hold on. 
it's going to be contingent on huh. who you get. You get the Rams, you're one and done. Huh. You get the Cardinals, you're one and done. Huh. You mess around and get the Bucks, you're one and done. Well, I hope so. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Since I picked them to win the Super Bowl. I don't care about that. We ain't talking about the Bucks yeah. right now. We're mm. talking about the Bucks at a later, later date and time. Mm. Right now, we're talking about your sorry, pathetic, no good, mangy, nothing for nothing cowboy. Huh. You mean the team that you gave me the field against? Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you took the field against my team, so, so you've got TF is in the field Correct. in the NFC East, yes, right? And that's for 10 cases of yeah. Diet Mountain Dew, and I'm up like 100 now. I don't know. I've lost track of it. I've got three swimming pools full of Diet right. Mountain Dew down in my little place. It takes up my whole backyard to have three. I've had to have two put in. I mean, you got off to an early start. You got yeah. a couple of cases off, early off. Uh, yeah, a couple of cases <laughs> early. So uh, are, are you willing to say the Cowboys will not win the East? Is that your you prediction not, now? Not saying anything. The sorry Cowboys. Yeah. That's okay, like what? me saying the sun is not going to shine to, to, tomorrow in su Southern California. Huh. It does that all the time. It might, we, I think it's going to rain tomorrow. It ain't going to rain. Yeah. Judge Skip, you know that's a sorry division. Mm. You, is, it a, is it a good division? I just want to say, is it a good division, yes or no? It has one good team in it. So it's not a good yeah. division. It's got one good team. Yeah. So are you willing to concede the division? Is I that know. what you're saying? Th why do you think you I have a skip? Hold you on. You know, I was going to let you out of the no. bet, let you buy your way out at a reduced price, but now after your <laughs> diatribe to start this show, after you had the audacity to wear that helmet and go Kawasaki on it, I am not, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire every last step all the way home for 10 cases of Diet Mountain Dew, and I will win that bet. Skip. I feel safe in saying I will win it because I've already won it. But see, this is why I didn't buy out quite yet. You mm. said buy out, buy out, buy out. Mm -hmm. You've been trying to get me to buy out for three weeks. Mm. I said, Skip, can we at least get to like week 10 or 11? You said you're going to let me get to week 10 of 11. So I think we're at week 9 now, week 10. Mm. So give me two more weeks. If they don't, we don't make a movement, then you yeah, let you well, you're, you're done on the buyout. It's over <laughs> after the show you just put on, the sorry show. Okay, it is now Take my off. turn to Take talk off. about my Dallas Cowboys. And I will admit... I was so shell-shocked last night that I could barely speak about my Dallas Cowboys. I could barely tweet. I, I could barely post because I did not see that coming. You did not see that coming. No, 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 no. Nobody saw that coming. You can argue it was the biggest upset of the day. You, you, if you want to go Jacksonville 9-6 to six over Buffalo, but, but the shock of this, the fact that my Cowboys were down 30 to nothing at home to Teddy Bridgewater and what was left of the Broncos, because I remind everybody, Von Miller got shipped out yes. last week. Yes. And I remind we'll everybody, read. by the end of the game, three of your offensive linemen were down, mm -hmm. one to start and two got hurt. Dress. And I will remind everybody that I was excited to watch the guy. I wanted the Cowboys to draft Patrick Sertan, play cornerback yesterday. He was gone in the first quarter with a knee injury and did not return. He didn't. I, I don't know where – even uh, Malik Reed was your leading sacker coming he in. He got hurt. Okay? He got hurt, and he was out. Okay? So I, I'm not even sure who was playing for the Broncos. So I've told you from the start, the one thing about me with my Cowboys, I am a painfully objective Cowboy fan. When they stink, I say they stink. Okay. And yesterday for me was beyond stink. Yesterday – was so shell-shocking because I told you all along for, for eight weeks of six and two, mm -hmm. I mean, so, sorry, seven weeks of six and one, actually, mm -hmm. but all the way up to yesterday, I kept telling you, this is a team I trust. I kept saying, this is a legit, authentic playoff team that I believe will be competitive in every game it plays. And I must admit, when this happened, especially when the fourth quarter came, I sat back and said, uh-oh, I'm in trouble here mm -hmm. because my team just got exposed by what's left of your team. <laughs> and it rocked me to my core because nothing good happened yesterday. I, I don't have one good thing that I can take away and say, well, at least we did that because let's start with my quarterback, shall we? Mm -hmm. He had two weeks off, and he came back at best rusty. Uh -huh. At worst, he was just awful. <clears throat> right. This was a flashback to 2019 Dak mm -hmm. as he was playing for a contract down the stretch. 
This man is being paid $75 million to play this year. Yesterday, he was worth $7.50. And I'm not exaggerating, $7.50. And to me, for once, you giving him an F, that's too good. There's got to be worse than an F. <laughs> At least it's an F minus. Maybe it's a G. I don't even know what a G is. Whoa. But, but it, it was so bad because he was so off the whole game until garbage time. Well, we already know he's in the garbage hall of fame. Yeah, empty yeah, calories. Okay. Yeah, they don't taste good. Okay. okay. Well, he did it again yesterday because, to your point, as he goes to the fourth quarter, he's 6 of 19 for 79 yards. That, that's impossible for me to compute in my brain. Right. That they, they were as hot an offensive team as there was in the league going into this game. I thought they couldn't be stopped. I did say that Denver was second in points allowed, so my score was a little lower because I said they'll have a hard time scoring. And I said it's going to go down to the wire late. Mm -hmm. And I said 24 to 17 Dallas. But we're going it deep into the fourth quarter. They got nothing. <laughs> but they got no points. And Dak in the fourth quarter goes 13 of 20 for 153 in sheer Straight garbage time. Yep. And he also threw a pick in the fourth quarter, which disturbed me. Right. The whole thing is horrifying to me because I didn't think we'd have one game like this the whole year. I thought we were going to lose some more games, but I thought we'd be competitive the way we were at GOAT on opening right. Thursday night. We pushed you thought you'd lose a shootout. Yeah. You didn't expect, right. you didn't expect your like team to. With Tom Brady, it took him down to right. 124 left right. in the game to do what he always does. Right except at New Orleans, and he pulled it off, and they have a walk-off right. field goal. Well, I, I can take some losses like that. So I said 12 and 5, and then I'm starting to think, well, maybe 13 and 4 is more realistic mm -hmm. because they're going to lose some more games. But if they lose them in that fashion, I'm just fine with it. They got run off the field again. This was flashback to early last year when they had the most pathetic run defense in the history of the franchise. Right. And yesterday, the Broncos, featuring Melvin Gordon, not Derrick Henry, <laughs> went for 190. My team managed 78 when all year long, we have been second in the league in rushing. Right. And, and all of a sudden, Zeke looked like he was running in Cabo Sand. It was like a flashback to last year. What? You're kidding me. 407 yards to a grand total of 290 for my team? You let Denver go 8 of 15 on third down? Yeah. You're kidding me. So here's where I got fooled, and I think they did too. All week long, and I know Dallas, Texas. I lived there for a long time. There's no city that will front run and take the Cowboys with it more mm -hmm. than Dallas. Mm -hmm. You can say Denver worships his Broncos, but nobody worships their pro football team the way Dallas does its Cowboys. Mm -hmm. So what happened all week? They're hearing their double-digit favorites, and this is going to be the easiest game they play maybe all year. Right. This is the cakewalk game. This is the one that's already money in the bank. This is almost like another bye week. That's how they went into this game mm -hmm. against the team that had given up the second-fewest points in the league. Right. So what happens on the opening kickoff? If we could see this, Tony Pollard is off to the races. And I immediately tweeted, he's the most underrated back in, in all of pro football because you can see how shifty he is, how quick, how, what, what a burst he has, and how hard he runs. That's the best play of the game. That, that was it. Little did I know yeah. that it was going to go downhill from there because I thought it was going uphill from here. When, when that happened, I said, oh, we're going to roar down to an opening touchdown and Denver's going to say, no moss, and here we will come, and it's going to be like 40 to 7. That's what I felt <laughs> like at that point. And immediately, before I know what's happened, it, it suddenly comes down to a fourth and one at, at the 38-yard line. And they say, well, Zeke's got this. No, Zeke doesn't got this. That's Zeke tiptoeing to the line of scrimmage. I realize it wasn't very well blocked, but there's a blitzer. Your safety, your safety comes Justin up, Simmons. Justin Simmons. And, and he just fades right into the safety. Well, if you have any burst, any knack, any sort of sixth sense, you, you at least make somebody miss and get a little bit loose there. How about take the points? But see, okay. all, but all year long, when the Cowboys been going for them fourth down, okay, you've been well, that, committing. That was him. the first one. That that's the one where you're doing it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, but I'm saying, There's, you think about it, Skip. Now, all year long, you guys have been going for fourth down, and you've been co-signing Mike McCarthy. I say you co-signing because he's getting it. I say, Skip, you got to play the averages here. Okay, you so let's go to the next one because immediately we come right <laughs> back around, and now it's it fourth and two at the twenty. This is the one where I tweeted, I'm taking the field yes! goal here. 
because Denver's too solid on defense, and instead they try a little pop pass to Cedric Wilson. And I, first I thought the ball got tipped. No, Dak that just didn't get a hold of it. Yeah. He just didn't get a hold of it. He just threw it in the dirt. This is my man, Dak Prescott. And he's going to score. Cedric Wilson would have scored. Well, it, it That's looked man like, coverage, Skip. It, it just looked like he had yeah. a big old step, right? Yeah. And would he still be running? Yeah, I, I would hope so. He'd and score. I thought this ball got tipped. And then I, I find out uh, after he watching the, the replay, dirt. he just threw it in the dirt. Yep. Okay, that is horrendously bad because you can't keep missing plays like that. Right. Okay, now speaking of missing plays, my man C.D. Lamb yesterday hey. got nine targets. He caught two balls for 23 yards. If we could see in order the two throws that Dak missed him on, the first one's third and seven at the 45. This is 11.05 left in the second quarter. This is the C.D. And I, he looks like he's gone to me, and he misses him by a yard long. Is it rust? Or is Dak just having one of those days? Because that looks like, and here goes again, here's the, the next one, and this is Dak escape, escaping to his right on the fourth down play. And see, he's got two steps on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are two touchdowns that I'm putting on the quarterback where you just flat out miss passes that, that could have changed right. the flow of the game because it's going to get the crowd into mm -hmm. the game. Do you realize my team had the ball eight straight times to start the game and scored zero points? Mm -hmm. Think about that. An offense that some were making the case was the most explosive in yeah. pro football. Yeah, pro football had folks a, had a web down the list, didn't they? That's it? correct. Eight straight mm -hmm. possessions with zero, not even a field goal because you had the field goal there. And the reason I wanted McCarthy to take the field goal on the, the second, fourth down, the fourth and two at the 20, if you take a field goal there, at least it's three to nothing and you feel like, oh, we cashed. Right. We, we got some points on the board right. and it might make you feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Now that brings me to my defense. You mentioned Tim Patrick the other day, and I give you kudos for that because I, I think of Corton Sutton, I think of Jerry Judy, Judy, but I don't really think much about Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick play. And, and he can play. He's bounced around, but he's 6'4", 215, and he ran 4'5". And all of a sudden, I look up, and let's see the third and 10 play at the 45. Well, what did I tell you you need to do to your yeah. guy? Okay, third and 10 at the 45, and Bridgewater just stands in there and drops a little dime. Oh, That's dropping a dime. Yeah. Okay, and then he comes right back on the next play and cuts it loose. That's probably as far as Teddy can throw it. And guess who he burns? My man, Trevon Diggs. On a double who, move. Who will bite on just about yes. any and everything. And if he bites right, he'll bite you. Yep. And if he bites wrong, he gets it's bitten. Exactly. Right? But now, Skip, what you do early is that you double move early. Now you got him thinking. He's going to be less apprehensive because if you don't double move him early, he's going to sit in the chair yep. and break on everything. The Broncos got out early and said, you know what? Out of the gate, let's double move him. <sighs> He bit because, like you said, Skip, he has been hearing, oh, he's going to break that record, that, four, that 14 uh, uh, yep. INT record. Yep. He's going to get that. He's okay. going to get at least 10, 11. Yeah, I know. Okay? Okay, I got it. Tim Patrick killed my team yesterday <laughs> with four catches for 85 yards. And every catch was big because it was either third down or that touchdown. Mm -hmm. And I, hats off to Tim Patrick because we could not guard him. Nobody could cover him. Which brings me to the play of the game, and it's one I still can't quite get through my hard head, but it's the blocked punt. This came early in the second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah right off the game. fourth and 14, and the ball gets blocked off his foot, and it goes forward, and it crosses the line of scrimmage. Right. So the rule as called is that— It's the Leon Roulette. I, I, okay, that was on a field goal, right. though. That was but, a field goal on Thanksgiving. I was there. Okay, but, this, but, this crosses the line of scrimmage, right. and, and he Sean it. Wright just touched it. If you don't and, touch and now it, the Broncos good. get it. But what they're saying is where he touched it, it's down because they brought the ball all the way back to the 19-yard line, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess they said he couldn't advance it. Right, so, right. Okay. It's, like, it's like he fumbled it because it's beyond the line okay. of scrimmage, Gil. But, but here's my problem with the rule. Did he possess the football? No. If he had possessed and then gotten stripped, I'd say, okay, you got me. It's your ball first and ten. But, Skip, it's like, Skip, if I punt the ball down the field okay. and it hits the back of a, 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 the receiving team's leg, he don't possess it, but it's a fumble. Okay, but if it hits the back of the receiving team's yeah, leg. Yeah, you're the receiving team. Yes. He's just not the receiver. He's, okay. he's on the receiving team. Okay. And he's beyond the line of scrimmage. Okay, but usually, no, you're the coverage team. No, right? no. Okay, no. you're the receiving team. I, right, I, I got it. I got it. I got yeah. it. You're the coverage. Okay, so that's what they're calling. Yes. They're calling the downfield rule upfield yes. because the ball happened to barely cross the, the line, line of scrimmage, scrimmage by about correct. a yard. That is correct. So if the ball had fallen a little short of the line of scrimmage, 
and Nashawn Wright had touched it, then it's okay. Correct. Then then it's it's just a dead ball. Correct. I get, or maybe you can you could still recover it. You, but the thing, what what happens, Skip, is that because he's beyond the line of scrimmage, he's an eligible receiver, so he could literally he could run with the ball, so he could have got it. But once he touches it, it's just like if I punt the ball down the field, and we've seen the Skip, the guy's trying to block, and the ball carries off his leg. Yep. They jump on it. It's the same thing. He's a part of the receiving team, okay, even though it. he's not the receiver. Okay. He's not the punt returner. Yeah, Bones Fossil, your man from Denver. Yeah. And Mike McCarthy were just stupefied at what happened because they couldn't f process because they're over there celebrating right. and it didn't ring true to them. Wait a second. I, I still don't love the rule of it because it feels like you did enough to get the football right. back because you actually blocked the punt. Right. Usually block punts go, go backward. backward. Right. And if it had gone backward, we'd be having a whole different story. Here's the thing, Skip. Normally what happens if somebody blocks to say a PAT, it used to be Skip, if the ball, you block something, Skip, and it goes beyond the line of scrimmage, what do they tell you? Get away from it. Your old Leon Lett rule, what happened on Christmas Day? Get away from it. It's a lot. You touch it, yep. and it's beyond the line of scrimmage. The other team jumps on it. It's their ball. Skip, you, you don't think like that because, like you said, I punt the ball. You hear that double thud. The yep. ball normally goes backwards. For some reason, this ball projected forward. And he, Skip, he's not thinking. He sees the ball right there. He tries to grab it. It touches his hands, and the Denver guy scoops was Johnny right on, and how he just got it clean, Skip, because it carried off his hand, he hit the ground, and the Bronco player scooped it up. Yeah, That was really the turning point because that was the first drive out of the half, Skip. So now you guys about to have great field position, yep. and it felt like you're like, okay, here come the Cowboys now. They've got their second win. They blocked the punt, and they went right down the field, and okay, you know what happened after that. Okay, so bottom line to this football game. I can make a case, I'm trying to see the glasses half full case, that this is the best thing that could have happened to my still young football team, a team that doesn't yet know how to win because it's missed the playoffs the last two years. And it needed to get knocked off its six and one high horse. Yeah. It needs to be knocked back to earth where it says, wait a second, we have to come out and play hard against everybody because they were not ready to play. Mike McCarthy's not going to get him ready to play. Well, he said he used all all week long, don't take the cheese, meaning the cheese in the rat or mouse trap. Right. And yesterday they actually played like mice, not men, you, mice. You told me you're going to win in spite of Mike McCarthy. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow you to blame Mike McCarthy for okay, this. Because so you, somebody, starting with Dak Prescott, okay. has to lift the team up in the pregame locker room or the pregame huddle and get them ready to play against a dangerous opponent just because the opponent is good on defense. Yeah. It's solid. They, they, they are good. Okay? They're solid. They, they are solid. That they can make you pay on defense if you're not ready to play. And obviously they weren't ready to play because they dropped passes. They had penalties. That they... It was a disaster, a debacle of a performance that all smacks of, we're just not ready today to but play. You said you want to look at this as a glass half full, a glass half full of what? Now, if you're a man on a strand of mm -hmm. the island and yep. you got a half a glass of water, that's mm -hmm. okay. Yep. But if it's, it's a half a glass of poison, no, are you still... It, it's a half a glass of Diet Mountain Dew. No, that's no, no. what it is. But then yeah. all the pins. That's it's the a, breakfast of that, champions. That was, that's the nectar of the Bronco gods. Broncos brought that poison. Yeah. Brought that poison to El Gordon, Melvin, Commissioner okay. Gordon, yeah. old Melvin Gordon, okay. running at the... And William. Skip, y'all had it. You remember that long run he had? Yeah. Like seven, eight, nine, ten tackles. Nobody tackled. Bob Nobody Lilly, tackled. Randy White hit him yep. too tall. Harvey Martin, yep. everybody was just, he just kept chugging. I told you, I, I loved how the defense <laughs> played at Minnesota because Kirk Cousins is dangerous. He went one for 13 on third down. What did he do to your Ravens yesterday? He lit Lost. them up. He lit them up. Lost. He took them all the way to overtime. He yeah. had a QBR of 72 scale of 0 to 100 uh, and outplayed Lamar. They did not play Lamar. Yep. But anyway, Skip, I, but I told you, Skip, this was an indictment on Kirk Cousins. Mm. This is why they let Cooper Rush start. Mm. This is why you won the ball game. It wasn't about, it was third down. One of 13 on third down. Mm -hmm. And now yesterday, Teddy, Teddy Bison and Teddy Two Glove come mm. in there and go eight of 15 on you. Mm. Yeah. Did a number on you. you okay. Know, I can't talk now about we're the Vikings. Now we're ready to play. Y'all ready to play what? Yep, ready to play Atlanta. And we're a nine oh. point favorite again. Over and you Atlanta. Atlanta. The, 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 the odds makers are still you. with us. Okay. No mercy. No Odell Beckham Jr., no problem, as Baker Mayfield led the Browns to a 41-16 statement win over the rival Bengals. Cleveland signal caller threw two touchdowns and addressed OBJ no longer being with the Browns. Baker wished him well and even went on as far as to call him a friend.
Huh. Okay. Maybe. Maybe not. Shannon, are the Browns better without Odell? Skip, that's a lazy, that's a tired narrative. So what role did Odell play in the first, you know, the Bengals are driving right down the field. And then Denzel Ward start, steps in front of Jamar Chase and goes 99 yard for a pick six. And the other two turnovers that they created after that. Nick Chubb running for 10 yards a carry. Well, if you get three turnovers and one of them turns into a pick six and your running back is running for 10 yards a carry, that opens up the entire offense, which is play action, which is what the Cleveland Browns offense is predicated on. Mm. Is that running the football, play action, and playing defense. When they put this deep, Skip, remember, they spent a lot of money on the defense. They took two DB from the Rams. They brought in Jadavian Clowney. So uh, uh, so they feeling really good that the strong suit of this, op- this, uh, this team would be their defense. And finally, it showed up. It took the ball away. It gave uh, uh, the Browns extra possessions. Odell don't play no role in that. Odell doesn't play defense. Yeah, it's easy to say, well, Baker played so much better. But when Nick Chubb is running the football, this offense is predicated on running the football. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Kirk Cousins. What did Dalvin Cook do yesterday? He ran the football and then play action set up everything after that. So when you can run the football in this offense, because this is the West Coast system, when you can run the football, it opens up your quarterback, and now the play action is going to be wide. Baker played well, Skip, but he only had to throw the ball 21 times. That's a good that's a good recipe. Keeping him under 30. When you start letting him get 30 plus, he gets into the 40s. Now yet that's telling me you can't run the football, you can't play action pass, and you're putting it all on Baker's shoulder. He played well, but Odell had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this winning this with they winning this game. Mm. Browns didn't turn it over. They forced three. One was a pick six. Mm-hmm. That's what uh, uh, led to them winning this game, Skip. That's 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 a lazy point. Odell. Man, Odell don't play defense. Mm -hmm. This is the best. I can make the case. This is the best the defense has played this game yesterday. And the Bengals are a very good offense. Joe Burrow, Chase, they got a nice tight end. They're a good team. Joe Mixon, P. Ryan, they can run the football, Skip. This is the best Cleveland's uh, uh, defense has played. And they took it to them. Um, It's very frustrating, Skip. You're going right down the field. You're about to go up 7-0. So before Baker even gets on the field, Skip, it's 7-0. So I don't think Odell had anything to do with this. Give them credit. Baker played well yesterday. Only had to throw it 21 times, over 200 yards, two touchdowns, no turnover. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's a good recipe. Mm-hmm. Took two sacks, but he didn't put the ball in harm's way. Mm. <sighs> I tried to tell you this. I've been trying to tell you this all year long. Odell had everything to do with what happened yesterday. The fact that Odell was not there took a cloud up off this team. This team could heave a sigh of relief and start playing football the way it's meant to play football. I still think it's the best team on paper in the AFC, but it has to do it on the field. And you saw some firepower on display yesterday because that was not just 14 to 7. This is 41 to 16, and you picked the Bengals to win that game. And they were favored by two and a half points at home. And I didn't even take the points. I said, I like Cleveland. I'll take Cleveland for three cases of Diet Mountain Dew because I think they're just better than Cincinnati. And I think when the fog is lifted off this team, the Odell fog, because the, the weirdest dynamic written about on Friday on ESPN.com by my friend Jake Trotter, who does a great job covering the Cleveland Browns. He wrote about how the Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham Jr. on-field relationship fell apart because off the field, they are very close friends. That's what tormented everybody in the organization. As, as late as this past Labor Day, Odell and Baker and, and Jarvis and um, Austin Hooper flew together to Big Sky, Montana for a little getaway. Mm-hmm. So, so th- that's how close they were. They played video games in the locker room, be- you know, in breaks before or after practice. practice. And the point is that they were almost too close. And Baker became so Odell-centric, so Odell-conscious. And I still say Odell's just not what he used to be. Injuries have robbed him of some of his quickness and explosiveness and his electricity that he had in New York. I've not seen it. In Cleveland, and Jake. Well, Freddie K. Show got yeah. something out of it. Yeah, you remember Freddie K. First year there, yeah. Odell yeah. was over a thousand yards. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, uh, Jake Trotter starts off his piece about a Week Nine incident. This is during the 2019 season, mm-hmm. in which 
Baker got skewered for a whole week because he didn't throw to Odell, who broke free running up the sideline. Right. And uh, a Cleveland insider says that's why Baker looked confused. That's how it went all year, which was so frustrating, is that Odell just ran the wrong route. He ran his own route. He ran an Odell route. And Baker took one look and thought that that's not where he's supposed to be. And he double clutched. And then he comes back to Jarvis and it's incomplete. Well, I, that's what I saw the whole season was double clutching. Not sure. Forcing the ball to Odell. I don't think Odell can stand up to being the featured receiver anymore. We're about to find out, and maybe out of spite, he's, he's going to be on his last legs now because he's going to get one last chance. But the point was yesterday, you saw the Cleveland Browns in all their glory without Odell because the ball got spread. Look, look at the stats, how, how, where, where the passes go, because their leading receiver was Jarvis with, with 11 yards. Yeah. He caught three balls for three, 11 yards. Yeah. And go, scan down the list. There are, what, five receivers with two? Nobody caught more than three passes. Yeah, that's what but I'm he only, saying. He was, only, he was 14 to what, 14 to 19, right. 14 to 21? Ball gets spread. Mm -hmm. And if we could see the throw to Peoples-Jones, I, I like Donovan Peoples-Jones. He, he can get past yeah. people. He's a big, strong receiver out of Michigan. And I, I like, every time he catches the ball, I like the way he, he looks. This is Baker at his best, right in stride. And that was a big throw. That broke it open to 21 to 7. Right. And he later added a, a just is almost a garbage time TD passed in Joku, but Nick Chubb, to your point, he's really good. Yeah. And if we could see the 70 yarder on Nick Chubb, this man can fly. He he is underrated fast. Once he hits a crack and gets in the secondary, watch, watch the takeoff speed here. When I saw this live, I said that because he's running. Right. Look, look how he's running from three DBs, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so you got that going. Mm -hmm. And and obviously the other running back who's Thunder Lightning running right. back is, is is out for this Green. yeah, and, and he'll be back right. at some point because mm -hmm. he's he's dealing with the same calf issue mm -hmm. that Dak had. But the point is they have firepower in, in spreading the ball to the receivers. And then their defense did a number on Joe Burrow yesterday because he went down five times. Yes. And Greedy Williams got hurt, he's having a shoulder issue, and he went out fairly early, and they still got after him. And Troy Hill can blitz out of the slot about as well as anybody can this side a honey badger. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're, you're seeing how it all came together. And now they go to New England, where New England's going to be like a two-and-a-half-point favorite. This, this is a big game. This is a, they, they've, they've found themselves, uh, albeit against your guy Sam Darnold, who's just a bust. To me. <laughs> I, I, just, I think he's washed up, done. I, I never liked him before the draft. But the point is, New England has caught fire, especially on defense. So this will be a big test for Baker yeah. and company to go in there. I like their chances. I like their chances down the schedule because they're, they're going to get back-to-back -back games against Baltimore with a bye in the middle. I've right. never seen anything like that. They get they go to Baltimore, and then they have a bye, and then they, they get Baltimore at yeah, home. Yeah, I don't know who made that schedule. Okay, and Baker's played well against Lamar in yeah, the Yeah, and Lamar has played well. Got him, he got him last year, yep. Okay, so I say they're off to the races. I say it's, it's good riddance to Odell, even though they love Odell. And, and to a man, they were all saying yesterday, we miss Odell in the locker room because there's no trouble in the locker room. Right. It was all on the right. field. Yeah, and for, what, for, whatever, for whatever reason, Skip, and even though Freddie Kay's first year, the year that Odell got there, he was over 1,000 yards, it still didn't seem like that was a... A, a the QB to a number one connection. It just didn't. See, it just didn't seem because mm -hmm. we had saw what Odell was yep. in, in, uh, with the Giants, and we saw Eli, and we was like, well, Eli is an aging quarterback. Yep. Yeah, he still can play, but just imagine if he had a more livelier arm and he could get the ball to Odell like Odell needs and yep. Odell wants. And so we thought this was a match made in heaven. Baker gets a number one receiver, a guy that can that's dynamic, I, can go get, can go deep, I intermediate, agree. make all the catches. I, I got it. And it just still, what, even after that first year, even that first year, when you take the he had a thousand yards, Skip, it still didn't seem like, well, damn, yep. something still seems off. I, I got it. So two quotes from the ESPN story, one from a team source. This has zero to do with anything off the field, which is why it's been so perplexing. Mm -hmm. And then the second quote from another team source, Odell is in Baker's head, and Baker's pressing every time Odell is around. Odell throws him off, and it gets all effed up from there because Baker becomes indecisive. That, that's what happened from the start. For whatever reason, it's a bad click between the two of them. Right. So to me, what happened last year, I told you the whole year, 
It was at Cincinnati that he got hurt last year. And I don't even want to talk about people getting hurt, so I'm going to knock on wood because that was a bad injury. Mm -hmm. And that sapped a little more of his electricity because that was the ACL. Right. And yet from there, Baker and the team took off. They go eight and three down the stretch. And what happened in that game at Cincinnati last year? Baker completes 21 straight passes, throws five touchdown passes, including the late game winner, and here they go. And I told you in those 11 games, he was ranked or graded by Pro Football Focus fourth overall best behind Aaron Rodgers and Holmes and Deshaun, mm -hmm. okay? Well, it, the proof was there right before your very eyes because all of a sudden the ball was moving and being spread. Right. That was Cleveland at its best, and they went and beat Pittsburgh in a playoff game at Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They lost to Mahomes, and they were again they were they took one step, and I think this year they're ready to take another step in the playoffs. So you like so you like them moving forward. I do. I like them a lot. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Well, uh, the Packers and all the drama we've been dealing with, they ended up losing 13-7 to in Jordan Love's starting debut while Aaron Rodgers missed the game because of his positive COVID test last week. And on Friday, the QB gave his side of the story on the Pat McAfee show. So take a listen for yourself. I realize I'm in the crosshairs of the woke mob right now. So before my final nail gets put in my cancel culture uh, casket, I think I'd like to set the record straight on so many of the uh, blatant lies that are out there about myself right now. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to tell my side of the story on here. First of all, I didn't lie in the initial press conference. Uh, during that time, it was a very, uh, you know, witch hunt uh, that was going on across the league where everybody in the media was so concerned about who was vaccinated and who wasn't and what that meant and who was being selfish and who would talk about it and what it meant if they said it's a personal decision, they should, shouldn't have to disclose their own uh, medical information or whatnot. And at the time, my plan was to say that I've been immunized. Um, it wasn't uh, some sort of ruse or lie, it was the truth. Okay, latest reports indicate that Rodgers and the Packers could face fines, but probably won't face any suspensions or loss of draft picks. So after listening to all that, Shannon, uh, how should Green Bay be punished? They should receive skip look. The only money doesn't mean anything to the Packers. It doesn't mean anything to these organizations because they make so much of it. Agreed. The only thing that matters to them, the capital that, that bothers them, the currency that means something is draft capital. When you start taking draft picks, high draft picks, Skip, I'm not talking about a sixth rounder. I'm start talking about you start getting, I'm not saying they should lose a first rounder, but if you want to take a second rounder or a third round draft pick, that would get Green Bay's attention. And I'm glad our Terry Bradshaw called him on his bull giant. He said he lied. Cosign. Well, he, you, you said it. From, we said from it. From day one, yes. Skip, he lied. Yep. Skip, and the, what I don't understand, Aaron Rodgers would never take advice from a financial guy about his training, about film study. But he's going to take advice about a virus from a comedian and a UFC commentator. Our ivermectin, I think I'm saying it correctly, Skip, mm -hmm. is a dewormer. It is. It's given to animals for parasites. Parasites. It's also humans mm -hmm. can take it if they have a parasitic infection. Correct. But it is not for a viral infection. It is not at which all been COVID. proven to treat COVID Thank you. for sure. And he's taken iver, iver, ivermectin. ivermectin. He's taken hydrochloroquine. Yep. He's taken a whole lot of BS that's been disproven. All debunked. Now, he didn't go to a, a, an infectious disease special. He didn't go to an epidemiologist. He didn't go to a virologist. He went to a UFC commentator and a comedian to receive advice on how he should treat COVID. He says he has his own medical team, but I, I'm not sure. It feels like Joe Rogan's on his medical Exa team. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I've done my research and mm -hmm. I tried. Now, the NFL shot back and said, no, nah, we received nothing. And we tried to meet with him, and then nothing happened. So, again, he's lying again. It's Skip, man, this joker here. And plus, the NFL has been very specific, Skip, about congregating, even away from the facility. That Halloween party is a cause for concern. Oh. But I don't want to let the NFL off totally off the hook. Because for eight weeks, they knew Aaron Rodgers was unvaccinated. Thank you. And they allowed him to go to Thank press you. conferences unmasked time and time and time again. And to stand on the sideline unmasked and to go shake hands after the game unmasked. Exactly. Now, remind you, Skip, you're not supposed to exchange jerseys anymore. You can't do that anymore. 
But he's unvaccinated and get to just go work, work. But he said the NFL was trying to shame because if I put the mask on, you're going to know I'm unvaccinated. So they tried to shame me with this woke mob. And then this is what really got me, Skip. Woke mob? This man want to, he want to quote Dr. King. And I would he like did. to add mix aside, but the great MLK said you have a moral obligation to object to unjust rules and rules that don't make sense. Let me put this in perspective for you. Aaron Rodgers, a white male, said him being forced to wear a mask around the building is the equivalent of what Dr. King was protesting for in the 60s about blacks receiving in America. Preach. If that is not the highest form of what white privilege is about. Hypocrisy. I don't get it. Yeah, Let that sink in people at home. Yeah. What he's equating, what Dr. King was fighting for and what he's fighting for is the exact same thing. He said that. That's he, what he said. He went there. I didn't do it. Nope. That's what he said. Ugh. Skip, it just shows that Aaron Rodgers think rules don't, are not applicable to him. He said, Skip, I thought it was a dumb rule, therefore I didn't follow it. If I don't deem that it's appropriate, I'm not following it. Well, the NFL, he told you what he thought about the, the, the mandate that you and the NFLPA agreed upon. He told you what he thought about it. The Green Bay Packers, I get it. You're kind of scared of him because he had the little power. He won the MVP. You mm -hmm. saw Jordan Love didn't look particularly good, but you know he was unvaccinated. You know he wasn't supposed to go to those meetings without a mask on, and you allowed it time and time again mm -hmm. because you were afraid of it. NFL, you got to send a message. You got to let this let 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 Aaron Rodgers and others know that the NFL is bigger than any one particular player. Correct. You did it with Tom Brady. You suspended him for four games. Now, I'm not saying calling for no suspension, but the fine and the draft picks that you should take should send a message to everybody. And it's been reported that there are a lot of team executives and a lot of coaches around the league. Said, I'm going to see how y'all going to handle this. Because y'all letting Aaron Rodgers walk around like he walking on water. Yep. That he's above reproach. Correct. And he's not. Yep. <sighs> to your point, in this 45-minute diatribe, he repeatedly attacked the NFL. Yes. There was no contrition shown. None. There was obviously no apology made. Of course. That will be beneath him. He's got to be the smartest man in every room and... When he goes on the McAfee show, he's obviously thinking, I'm the smartest man in this room preaching to the masses who, who idolize mm -hmm. me. Okay, on NBC last night, it gravely concerned me that I heard the report that it looks like the NFL is only going to fine the Packers and, in, in effect, Aaron Rodgers. But right. it's just the Packers who will get fined. Mm -hmm. No draft picks taken. No suspension. I am so with you. It is time to make an example. The way they tried to make an example of Brady over mm -hmm. Deflate Gate, right. to, to make an example of the Patriots for their right. history of cheating. Right. It is time before this goes completely out of control because everybody's watching in this league. Well, how are you going to treat Aaron? Mm -hmm. You're going to let him get away right. with this with a little wrist slap fine right. that nobody will even blink at, to your point. It, this, it doesn't bother them at, at all. Remember, New Orleans last year on a repeat violation got a sixth round pick taken mm -hmm. away. This should be a higher pick and it right. should come now. It should be a third rounder at least. Yes. And to me, Aaron will be eligible to come back next Saturday, a game, I'm sorry, day ahead of the uh, Seattle at Green Bay game. Correct. Could be Russell Wilson's return, not sure about that. I would suspend him for that game, too, because you have to, to make it hurt. Mm -hmm. you, you have to send a message to the rest of the league. This is not acceptable. But the problem with this is now, to your first point, the league is somewhat complicit here. Yeah. And I'm afraid the league is feeling like, gee, we can't drop the hammer on him because we deserve some hammer right. ourselves. Right. We knew all along from day one. He did not qualify as vaccinated. Right. We shot down all of his claims about all these right. other treatments, the, these ivermectin-type treatments, Correct. zinc, or, yeah. or all those ones you mentioned. Right. He tried all of them, and they said no, no, and double no to all of them. Correct. He was unvaccinated. He says he was immunized because that's his view, because his medical people told him that. But that here's the thing, count. though, Skip. Just because you say something doesn't make it true. I sleep in my garage. It doesn't mm -hmm. make me a Mercedes because I slept in my garage. Just because he says I'm immunized, what is the correct, what is the correct okay. pronunciation, what is the correct term? 
You got to be accredited, Skip. No one said that. That's what you said. That's your right. definition because you took right. so, so the NFL medicine. disqualified exactly. Him. And the NFL knew he was disqualified from vaccination. Yes. And the NFL stood idly by yes. watching him yes. do interview after interview in a closed door situation with the gathered media. But what did he say, Skip? And he didn't have a mask on. What did he say? Well, everybody else is in there vaccinated, so why should I have to wear one? Think about what that, he said. That just shows you. How, how, how dumb he is. Smug. Really. And he, again, Skip, he's like, well, I should have body autonomy. You, you do, Aaron. But here's the thing what you're missing. In a situation like this, can you think about someone other than Aaron? Have you ever in your life thought about someone other than Aaron Rodgers? Now, I know you love Aaron, and you should. But for one second, you're talking about, you know, I'm good. But what about your potential of getting someone else sick? Mm hmm that don't even cross your mind. No. Nope. Because all you care about, you can't see outside of Aaron Rodgers. So whatever Aaron Rodgers, even though I could possibly potentially get someone sick or have someone take something home to their family and get them sick, that's, that's in consequence to okay. me. Okay. So I don't know whether the NFL has tried to find them or has find them along the trail no. leading up to now. I no. doubt it. Right. Because we got to see live on national television, Aaron on the sideline with no mask. Right. We got to see after games, such as at Arizona, he's on the field shaking hands face to face, nose to nose right. with no mask. And, he, and they know that. The NFL, and the NFL allowed this to happen and said, well, you know, we let the team. No, you don't. You don't let the team govern itself. Mm. You, you don't do that because you find the team when you found, when you thought they were doing something wrong, you find them. You don't let the team police themselves. Skip, that's why you have a commissioner. If you're if you, if you going to let the team police themselves, why would you need a commissioner? Considering that he made $128 million over yeah. the last two years. So why would you need him if you're going to let the team police themselves? Mm. But here's the thing, Skip. Somehow Aaron Rodgers has tried to turn himself into a martyr for the woke, the woke mm -hmm. cancel. Nobody trying to cancel you, but we trying to hold you accountable for your lying. Talk about, well, if they had asked the follow-up question, I would have clarified it. You had six months to clarify. Mm -hmm. You weren't going to clarify. You thought you was going to skate. Mm -hmm. He was sitting pretty skip like, ooh, I'm 10 weeks in. Yep. Nothing. Nobody knows. But my team says teammates knew. I don't know if all the teammates knew. The, uh, the team knew. The league knew. He thought he was going to skate. And then all of a sudden, we find out. Because you're like, hold on, in 10 days, I mean, normally, if you don't have any symptoms, you know, you can make it back. If you have two negative tests in 24 hours, you can make it back. Well, all of a sudden, they say, boom, 10 days. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, the wheels started clicking. Everybody said, now all of a sudden, those yep. reporters that should have asked the follow-up question, they yep. started digging. He unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. Now, he mad NFL out of me. No, they didn't out you. You out of yourself. He did. But you're not a martyr, Aaron. Mm. You're a liar. <laughs> you, you, you very arrogant. You flippy it. So I loved a piece written in today's USA Today sports section. It may, you know what, it might run somewhere else in the, the section. I'm not sure. But it, it's about debunking Aaron Rodgers' claims. And it shreds many of the claims. It took six of them. It's, it's fact-checking six yeah. of the, the assertions right. that, that Aaron made. And the quote at the top of the piece is, his comments were riddled with debunked claims. Yeah. Here are six of the most blatantly false or misleading statements Rogers made during Friday's appearance. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to go through all of them. We don't have time, obviously, but just a couple of quick ones. The first one is, Rogers said on the, the radio the other day, or TV radio, this idea that it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated is just a total lie. Fact check. Unvaccinated individuals are, in fact, bearing the brunt of the pandemic's impact. Right. And by the way, quick side note, your running mate in the backfield, Aaron Jones, father died from COVID. Right. So it's a domino effect. If, if you happen to infect one right. of your teammates, they could infect a loved one, right? Correct. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's try another one here. One more. Rogers claim, to my knowledge, there's been zero long-term studies around sterility or fertility issues around the vaccine. So that was definitely something I was worried about. Fact, there is no scientific evidence to support Rogers' concerns. According to the CDC, there is currently no evidence that any vaccines, including COVID-19 vaccines, cause fertility problems in men or women. Boom. Okay, so we, we could just go right down the list. Of course. Where he just got shredded. To his and, knowledge. And, and, Your knowledge is not an infectious in, disease. In the end, he says that when he tried to present all this to the NFL doctors, 
they thought I was a quack. I agree with you. And them. you know what? He's a quack. Yes. And he's listening to quacks. Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 he's getting all that information from you nowhere. Yeah. And he's he's lying for quacks about quacks. Yeah. Well, really? in this situation, Skip, this is not a Q&A. We know who Q is and we know who A is. Mm -hmm. So this is not a Q&A. But they go together in this situation. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about Q and I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. The Q I'm talking about with that other group and yep. the A I'm talking about is Aaron Rodgers. Yep. They belong together because all he did was compile a lot of things that's been debunked. And he wants to put out there. And then what, what's, so, what's so disappointing about this, Skip, is that Aaron Rodgers, people listen to Aaron Rodgers. He's not just someone that just, he, he's, a, he's a prominent public figure. And for him to say things like this just goes to show you how little he cares about anybody else other than Aaron Rodgers. He's the most selfish. And Skip, when I look at I go back and I, 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 we talked about this and we had this, where I think Aaron Rodgers would have won about six or seven championships with Coach Belichick. No, he wouldn't have. You know why he wouldn't have? Because he'd have felt he knew more than Coach Belichick. Definitely. At least Tom Brady was humble enough to know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's not how he thinks. Aaron Rodgers, there's not a coach that Aaron Rodgers doesn't think he's smarter than. Because you know how I know, Skip? That Sunday night game, oh, I called a play. Well, uh, you know, Matt did the first play, but after that, I took it over. Ain't nobody asked you that. Nope. But I got to put that out there because, Skip, I got to let you know how smart I am. Other quarterbacks wouldn't be able to do that. I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. Boy, Aaron Rodgers full of it. All the way. And he lied. I don't care what he says. You can use the, he was disingenuous. You can say he misspoke. You mm -hmm. can say alternative facts. But where I'm from, we call that lying. Yep. Shannon Sharp, from day one on this show, I have told you that Aaron Rodgers, the guy that you love on the football field, yes. is nothing but a finger-pointing, blame-deflecting diva yes. who's a lousy leader because he cares only about Aaron and his personal glory. Right. That's all he cares yeah. about. And he held them hostage and got away with it. He didn't get more money, but he got more power within yes. the organization. Yeah. And I think that power has come back to bite them because they let him get away they with, with near-murder, quote-unquote, within the confines of the right. protocol. Mm -hmm. And here we are, and I wish that, that he could get suspended for one game and they could get fine draft picks as opposed to just money. But I don't know if the NFL is in position to do that. Yeah, I, I would like for them to like finish. And if Aaron had to play that Kansas City game, yep. they would have been the number one seed because I wanted to hurt. Because these get right now. I mean, they look at that and trust me, the guys in the locker room like, man, if we'd have Aaron, we'd have beat this team. Well, sure. We, we, well, we, well, he did cost them that game yeah, yesterday. I think yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah. He cost them that game. Yeah. He cost them that game. Because, listen, his defense rose and shone yes, yesterday. Yes. I, I'm looking up. They got some players on yes, that defense. Yes, yes. They do. So, and if you have that guy right there, that selfish guy, the condescending oh, guy, yeah. the arrogant guy, the flippy one, you the one. He's all those things, Skip, but he's a damn good football player. Yeah. Well, he can be. And now he's cost them a game in – a year in which there's only no, one number one seed, and they might just fall out of it because of this. About yeah. uh, uh, fertility and, and mm -hmm. with the sterility and all that. Man, Ayla, I don't tell people what they should or shouldn't do, but if you're that selfish, I don't know if kids should be on your plan, bro. Mm. Because when you have kids, you have to, you have to divorce self. You really do. Because wow. there are a lot of times that you go without I got so it. kids can have some. I got it. No mercy. The Blazers ran away with a 105-90 win against the Lakers on Saturday. Russell Westbrook finished 1 of 13 with six turnovers. And meanwhile, Anthony Davis exited the contest in the first quarter with a stomach illness. And a former Lakers trainer said that LeBron's injury could keep him out one to two months. Shannon, scale 1 to 10, how concerned are you about the Lakers? I'm a 10 because I've seen nothing to be encouraged about. Mm. LeBron James is hurt. And if this train is to be true, he's out four to eight weeks. That's two. That's a month. This to is two. the former uh, head of strength and conditioning for the Lakers. Right. But go ahead. Right. Um, even though they said, and, and yeah. you know, Skip, they, they put a timetable, but they're not going to be as forthcoming as they need to be. They're just like, hey, we we'll basically take it week to week. But I'm just trying to figure out what's been encouraging. LeBron is out, and the injuries are starting to come with greater regularity, and they're keeping him down for an extended period of time. AD hurts something every single game. And he limps into the game. He limps out of the ball game. And Russ, I don't care what anybody says, Russ has been a total disaster for the Lakers. And he is what we, and Skip, I said this. I want to be abundantly clear. 
I said Buddy Hill would be a better fit you for did. the Lakers than Russell Westbrook. You said that. I said, but if anybody can make this work, it's be LeBron. But I, give me a choice. I'm taking Buddy Hill. Now, Russ is what he is. He's an inefficient, ball-dominant, turnover machine. That's what he's been with the Lakers. Skip, we've never seen a player this good. He's been on four teams in four years. Teams are not letting great players go like this. Mm -mm. Okay, see. Okay, good. Y'all can have him, Houston. Houston say, nah, we good. The Wizards say, nah, we good. <laughs> when have we ever seen something like this? This is who he is. And LeBron and AD, y'all better because, the, hey, Rob Lincoln had Buddy Hill lined up. But you guys said you wanted Russ. So you bear some of this also. You bear some of this. <clears throat> and this is very, very disappointing. And I don't see... As I look on the horizon, I don't see the sun rising on the horizon, Skip. This is a, this team, and you look at the pieces around it, we said the piece, they're not very good, but you got LeBron, you got AD. But the one piece, there's some dishes that you can cook. If you put one ingredient in it, Skip, it messed the whole dish up. That's this. Mm. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a, a potato salad. You put raisins in potato salad, it's done. I don't care who cooked it. Put raisins in it. Mm. Put pecans in it. Cause I, you know, we done got all day. Everybody want to add something to a, a dish, a, 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 a whole sacred dish. Yep. Five turnovers a game. Mm. And what he's been able to do, Skip, you know what he's been able to do? Get the triple-double. But people don't look at it. The dude had 22, 22 points, but he had 22 shots. Yeah, he had 11, he had 11 assists, but he had seven turnovers. We... Because we looked at the triple-double, Skip, we forgot just how bad he played in those triple-doubles. Yep. So, I said before this started, he will not work because he will not fit. Solo act, stat machine. And now he's not only a disaster, but he's, to me, an unfixable disaster because he has no conscience. I don't think this bothers him a bit. No. He just goes on to the next shot the next game, the next week, and he keeps playing the way Russ plays because Russell Westbrook had a documentary done about his life that dropped before the season started, and LeBron went to the premiere out here in Hollywood. What do you think that said to Russ? I am a made man. I am validated. I am a triple-double machine. I've averaged triple-doubles for the last five years. I play the way I play. This is my town, this is now my team, and here we go. And you're going straight to basketball hell following Russell Westbrook mm -hmm. because he is all-time Westbrook, uh, Westbrook, I'm sorry, on Saturday night, watched the whole thing at Portland. Portland's struggling. They came in four and five. Yeah. Dame had a horrendous shooting night the night before. I think he scored four points. Four points. <sighs> Got healthy against them. Boy, he did. Right away, he goes bang, bang, couple of quick threes, and here it went, and they lost the first quarter 36-14, to 14, and here went Russ. And if we can just drive home the point of how out of control he gets, could we show first the 12 missed shots that he had at Portland on Saturday <laughs> night? 12 missed shots. Starts out with Wes Brick, back iron. He's stepping back like he's yeah. Steph Curry. Yeah, and he shoots it with such confidence to me, back iron. And then that's the one that's a foot short. You know, that's a foot short air ball from 17 feet. Left that on the, the front The worst rim. thing that can happen is you fall behind yep. because now he's yep. start playing hero ball. Well, and then he thought he could go glass and yep. he shot it too hard. He's been pretty good off the glass. What is this? Just it missed by two feet wide right. And then he's up, left-handed, short. Russ, give us a West brick that got swatted. And that's just a wild out of control shot that most coaches would pull him for back on. Which shot have you shown that wasn't wild and out of control? <laughs> Up. Even the layups are almost air balls. They're so short. Yeah. Okay. Now, that is compounded by the fact that he had six wild out of control turnovers. If we could see those on Saturday night where you're double jeopardy where you're missing 12 shots and you're turning the ball. Still, what, what, what is that? that? I don't know. Help me out. This, this is a cinch first ballot Hall of Famer. Russ, Russ, don't. Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh. See, m most guys get yanked for that, but not Russ. Think he worries about those turnovers? What, I, nope. Skip, these, I mean, these lobs nope. aren't even close. Yep. Yep. Well, I there mean, he is. Skip, 
Skip, these lobs are not even. And, and Dwight Howard is not the athlete that he once was. But Skip, these lobs aren't even close. Not even close. Has no feel for the game. The complete polar opposite of LeBron James, yes. who remains the best passer in basketball with the highest IQ in basketball. Obviously, he's going to be gone for who knows, maybe a month or God knows two months. Right. And that leaves the team in charge of point guard, quote unquote, Russell Westbrook. It, it's hard to live with it because he has so little feel for doing anything but attacking the rim. That's it. He, he can drive it like a demon. And if he gets in a flow, he can leave balls on the floor for somebody to dunk. If he right. draws two to the rim, that's right. what he learned with Stephen Adams in Oklahoma City. If, if I get two to the rim, if I can just dump it on the floor, he'll dunk it. Right. And I'll get in the assist column a big right. assist. Right. And I'll average a triple-double. Well, it's getting you nowhere fast because he, he needed some help from Carmelo the other night. And he goes 4-14 of in his return to Portland and misses all four of his three-point mm -hmm. shots. So he fell to earth with a thud. And obviously, they're missing still THT and Kendrick Nunn in Ariza. It don't and, matter. And, and if he's playing like that, Skip, I, I they're they, they going to need Kareem, Worthy, and Magic to come back I, I if he's it. playing like this. Yep. And what's funny is... The guy who's played the six most minutes so far, this, is, this sums it up for me about your Lakers so far. Six most minutes have gone to the undrafted Austin rookie Reeves. from Oklahoma, Austin Reeves. And he plays his heart out out there. And as LeBron said before the season started, he's got some dog in him. But seriously, an undrafted rookie is playing your – he's your sixth man, so to speak, mm -hmm. sixth highest minutes. Th that's trouble for you because, to your point – Anthony's always got something, and then he's got a stomach bug the other night. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. They yeah. said it's not COVID. I got, well, I must be had the same thing he had because yeah, I'm sick to my stomach, too. Yep. I've been watching the Lakers, so that's what he's been doing. He's sitting on the bench and watching Russ go up and down the court. I don't want to throw up also. So that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's not something that if they move Russell Westbrook, he wouldn't feel better. Mm -hmm. Watch watch all his stomach ailments will be gone away, and it's, he'll feel a lot better. <laughs> but right now, he's carrying a bad player on his team. Mm -hmm. That's why his stomach's hurt. Mm -hmm. That's why he's always having these ailments. Because he got to lift the guy. He got to play basketball and carry a guy. Mm. So here come playing back to back the Hornets, who played in your building last night against right. the Clippers. And the Hornets were up nine with 6.15 left and gave up a 27 to 4 run to close the game. Well, They'll beat Lakers. Th that's what I'm saying. That now they're going to say, okay, let's shake that off. We, we got to get right yeah. here because they've been playing very well. Miles Bridges, Miles Bridges yep. playing, you know, he turned on that 60 million. He's like, yep. no, nah, I'm worth 100 plus. Yep. And he's playing well. Melo is playing well. Why? They beat. Yeah, they beat Lakers. Yep. Yeah. I would agree with you. I thought we'd get a little bet on it. No, we don't. Like you really no, no, no. no give, me the, give me the Hornets. Give you the Hornets. Yeah, I take the Hornets. Well, I'm not going to take the Lakers because <laughs> the last guy I want to bet on right now is Wes Brick. <laughs> but, but you want me to take the Lakers. Well, well, I, you already I thought know maybe, and, and all of a sudden, you are drifting off the bandwagon pretty early here. Hey, I, I think I'm going to take some time. I need some time to myself. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm just not mentally there right now, so <laughs> <laughs> I might need okay. to talk to somebody about this. Well, as long as you don't miss the show, you'll be okay. <laughs> no, no mercy. Matthew Stafford threw two costly interceptions in a 20-second span in the second quarter as the Rams lost at home to the Titans 28-16. to The veteran QB took the blame after the game, saying, quote, the turnovers are on me. Our defense played good. If we don't turn over the ball tonight, we've got a chance. So, Shannon, last week you were big on L.A. as the best team in their conference. So, do you now have doubts about the Rams winning the NFC? No, I don't. Skill. Look at this. The Titans won a game. They were 4-12 on third down. They had less than 200 yards. They had less than 200 yards of total offense. 26 catches for 69 yards. And Tannehill had 143 yards passing. But when you get a pick six, when you basically get two pick six, because he threw one and the guy ran it down to the two-yard line the next play in the end zone, then he came right back and threw a pick six. That was the ball game. At one point in time, Skip, they were over on third down conversions, but they were up 14 points. Mm. You can't, a game like this, and, and Stafford is absolutely right. I was at this game. I happened to be at this game last mm. night. And me, me and the Ram Bassett. So, I, you know, I was white, so I saw up close and personal. Mm. Uh, Skip, you're not going to win a game if you have 12 pennies for 115 yards. You turn the ball over. You let you let a team get points on your possessions. Yep. You're going to lose the game. Yep. This was, this was an aberration. 
The Rams are better than this. They stalled a lot down in the red zone, Skip, and they had to settle for field goals mm -hmm. instead of touchdowns, and normally they cash those in. But I'm, sti I'm still bullish on the Rams. Mm. They're still better than your Cowboys mm. and the uh, other team that we're not mentioning today. Mm, really? Nope. Interesting. So, all I heard last week is Matt Stafford for MVP. Yeah. MVP. Yeah. Or LVP, least valuable player? Although, is that possible? All he, you know what? He took his cue from Tom. Huh. He saw what Tom did the week before. Did he? And followed it right up. Jinxed him. You did. You still bullish on Matthew Stafford, late of the Detroit Lions? You still? You yep. sure? Yep. I have been trying to warn you. I've been trying to tell you he is not that guy. Do not trust Matt Stafford. He's never been in this kind of spotlight, in this kind of city, out in Hollywood with this kind of team and this kind of rising expectations. And right on schedule, big Sunday night game against a team that had just lost Derrick Henry that had no business winning this game. No. He threw it to them. He, he literally threw it to them, and I'm sure Rams fans were ready to throw up when he threw it to them. If we could see those plays again, please. Still bad. Th this is your MVP. This is <laughs> the Hall of Famer, one. Shannon Sharp, says this man is the MVP. What? No. 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 Oh. That's the Carson Wentz oh. special. Remember Wentz did oh. that last week, Skip? But this was even worse. Well, Wentz threw it left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> At least he threw it right-handed. Then he comes right I, back, and Kevin know. Byard just jumped all over. But Skip, the guy, I mean, what did he see? I'm trying know, to figure out what you tell me. Because Kevin Byard just, yes. just deked him because he looks like he's going to drop back into a cover two, and all of a sudden he just bolts on the outside receiver, and they sort of switch. He switched places with yes. the cornerback, and then he's off to the races. Yes. That, that pass was more intended for Bayard than it was for whoever it was, it Cooper Cup. You know the play, that play, yeah. you know where you get that defense from? Ooh. That's the play they picked Kurt Warner off in the Super Bowl. Yep. Ty Law picked him. He did. That's a good <laughs> one. Okay, so then we get to one last hurrah for your Los Angeles Rams. Comes with 639 left in the game. I don't know, you probably hit the road by this I point. did, I did, I Six, did beat the 639 traffic. left, it's fourth and one at the Tennessee 40, and here's Matt Stat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that was ugly. Nearly yep. tripped, threw it wrong, wrong, wrong footed off the, you know, rolling left, cross body, and actually turned his ankle on the play. Yep. So we're not sure if he's going to be okay going forward. But that was another ugly play that fittingly ended an ugly night. Well, Skip, the Simmons kid, the defensive tackle, and Jeffrey Landry, Simmons. Whew. Skip, they were, they were, they were, they, 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 they dialed up the heat now. Yep. They, they came and got him out. He was just, Simmons was just bull rushing, yep. and they couldn't do anything with it. He's the one that forced the, the, the INT in the end zone. Mm -hmm. He got another bull rush. I mean, he was outstanding. Landry, they started to get pressure. Bud Dupree has been a, a very good addition. Yep. They're, they're, they're solid on the back end. Mm. But when you can generate that kind of pressure, Skip, the Titans were up 14-3 to with 28 yards and one first down. I, I've never seen anything like it. Yep. How you get a 14-3 lead with 28 yards and a first down? Welcome well, back, Adrian Peterson. He had 10 carries for 21 yards. He did score a late touchdown yeah. that clinched it. It's, 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 it's going to be tough. I mean, he's not. He's going to be really sore this morning. I'd say. But it's going to take him some time to get his legs back under him, Skip. But look, the Titans played well. Let's give them credit. 194 mm. yards of total, uh, uh, total offense. Their defense dominated this game. But if you look at the Rams, the Rams defense played well enough to win. Okay. Van Jefferson dropped a couple of passes. He skip. did. He, he uh, you know, they got a lot of confidence because they moved on from uh, um, from Deshaun. Deshaun. So you're, you're the guy. I got a little stat for you. Regular season plus postseason. All time, Matt Stafford versus winning teams. Yeah. He is now 9 and 70. Nine wins and 70 losses. He's not that guy. Watch. He will come unraveled. He, he will come apart when you not against the Cowboys. need him to. I bet he won't come against, apart against the Cowboys. Well, That's what I hope y'all match up with. Okay. And we'll he see. He says he's even going to get that far. Don't worry about it. They, huh. At worst case scenario, it'll be a wild card. Huh. And that means they got to come to your town. Huh. And you know what? I, I didn't see this happen one time last night. I don't know why, but old Coach McYay, ah, Sean you go. McYay, there you go. There running you up go. the tunnel. Remember this? Remember him? Here's old Coach McVay. Oh, look at it. Yeah. He's congratulating all those defensive players coming off the field. Way to go. Butt slap them all. Here we go. Yeah. Running. Skip the Super defense. Bowl. Here we come. The defense. That's against play. Tampa. You and there he goes. Guess who he's running after? A guy who is DJ. no longer a Ram, now 
possibly a Raider. We think he's yeah. going to be a Raider, Deshaun Jackson. Way to go, coach. And guess what? Well, why saw, didn't we see that last night? You saw I how, didn't see that happen. You saw how well night. the defense played last huh. night. But you know Von Miller's coming. Yeah, there you he know goes. Von's. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we saw this last night at the end of the game when he just kept running right up the tunnel because he was embarrassed by what he had just seen. I don't know. AD, yeah. Ben of Floyd, yeah. they're gonna, and they're going to get Vaughn. Yeah, they're going to get Vaughn. And, Is he ever going to be right? And Jay Ramsey played very well he last did. night. He had a good game. Yeah. I would agree. Okay. Uh, it all comes down to quarterback. It is a quarterback's game. And I can make the case that you could trust Jared Goff going forward more than you could trust this guy going forward. I would put all my, Jared Goff did was get you to a Super Bowl. No, right? defense did that. i tell you what I will do. I'll take nine over four. Mm. I'm going to leave it at that. Yep, nine over four. Well, four's coming off <laughs> maybe the worst game of his career. Oh, I can okay. make the case. He, maybe the worst game of his career. No, I've seen some worse than that. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. I, I, I haven't. Mm -hmm. when, when you've thrown for 79 yards through three quarters, I think that hit rock bottom. Rock bottom. What do you mean yep. through three quarters? With six minutes ago, he had only thrown for like 90 yards. Mm. Right. And then all of a sudden, he come out there and get 136 mm -hmm. and get padding the stat. Yep. Stat padding. No. Resease some momentum. Got to start feeling good about yourself. Yeah. Loved it. There ain't nothing to feel good about. Yeah. You got beat. Well, bad, good. Skip. This was bad. This ain't no, we missed a field goal. This ain't something, hey, guys, that we clean up the turnover. Yeah, this we is about okay. the Rams. And speaking of looking bad, you lost again on your home, new home turf. So fine stadium. You lost again. All I know. You lost badly. We, they, they lost, Skip. I yep. was all that close and personal. Mm -hmm. But it sure looked like Jerry World was a Bronco home game. Really? I know you saw all that blue. I know you saw that blue and orange up in the house. Did you see it? But I never said that the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. You've got the Rams <laughs> winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> I didn't have right? them winning yeah, the Super you Bowl. Did. I didn't pick them. Well, I, you picked the Bucs. Actually, okay. you picked the Chiefs to beat the Bucs, right? Yeah. You still there? No, no. I, I ain't no. feeling good about okay, that. Okay, thank you. As right. long as you know who, mm. don't make it. Who? I know, I ain't going to say it. Because huh. that might jinx them. Oh, might okay. put them in there. Yep. But you know who. All I know is the Rams aren't that team because that guy is not that guy. What about your guy? Huh. Well... And this is like I can say, see, well, Master Stafford, well, if you don't turn the ball over, we're going to be okay. The at least my guy has won a playoff game in his lifetime, and your guy has not won a playoff favorite. game. He's oh, been a favorite. 3 I mean, uh, I mean, your guy was at home, mm. got, got beat by Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. and then came out there to the Coliseum and got run all over. Mm. Jerry Goff, I played your guy. Remember? No mercy. This week, the most electrifying player in the league is on Thursday Night Football. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens square off against the Dolphins. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. While the Lakers keep struggling, one anonymous NBA exec didn't hold back when discussing the flaws surrounding the team's roster, saying this, they're not very good, they're old, they're poorly put together as a team, LeBron as he always did, brought in a bunch of guys he wanted to play with instead of who he should play with. Who said this? Shannon, how much truth is there to what this exec is saying? Skip, there's some truth to that. The mere fact that Russell Westbrook is on this team lets you know it's not well put together. Hell, I didn't need a Zach. I didn't need somebody that does this for a living to tell me this team isn't well put together, Skip. Mm. LeBron has to own that. Buddy Hill was a done deal. Buddy Hill now is shooting 42% on three on 10 on 10 three attempts per game. Yep. That would be a better fit. Ricky Rubio would be a better fit for the Lakers than Russell Westbrook. He shot the lights out there. He made Did eight of nine skip. threes. But Skip, you have to understand how LeBron thinks. LeBron, for the better part of his career, he's been able to take guys that he wanted to play with. D. Wade and Bosch win two titles. Kyrie and Love win a title. A D win a title. It's hard to say, even though when no one else wanted J.R. Smith, they, he got great production out of J.R. Smith. He did. Timothy Mozgov, he turned Timothy Mozgov into the second best player on a, on a championship contending team. Yep. He did that. So, Skip, once you do things, you get confidence that you can take anybody. LeBron James sincerely believed that he could take Russell Westbrook and he could turn him into a champ and turn the Lakers into a championship contending team with Russ. And I didn't believe, and, and me, the only reason that I was foolish enough to believe that is because I've seen LeBron do it before. Now, D. Wade and, and Bosh and A.D., Kyrie and Love were a trillion times better fit than what Russ is. But LeBron, in his mind, believes, 
And you know what, Skip? Maybe if LeBron was in year 12, if all of a sudden he didn't have these nagging injuries, mm -hmm. maybe he could pull it off. But the thing is, LeBron is going to have to understand that you got 61,000 minutes on your body. And the things that you once could do and that you could overcome, yep. you can't do that anymore. Nope. And I believe this might be, this might be, and I said it, Skip, this is be LeBron James' most daunting task in all of his life. In all of his life, whatever transpired as a child growing up, yep. this will be as tough as not tougher. Okay. Are you willing to concede to me that what I've said all along is true because you have previously scoffed and ridiculed me? What I do, what I say. When I've said LeBron is the GM of this team, and I think you just admitted he did put this team together. It's not Rob Palenka. It's, it's, I'm sure there's input from Rob, right. but, but no, no, LeBron but signs off. Skip, they had the deal. For Buddy Hill. That's yep. been widely reported. It has. And he wanted Russ. So uh, Rob understands the general manager. Whatever your best whatever your best players want, you give them. Kevin Durant and Kyrie said, go get James Harden. They went and got James Harden. So you listen to your best players because this is a super, superstar-driven league. Okay. You're right, Skip. Buddy Hill would be much, much better. Okay. But that's not what we have right now. No, he did not want to play with Buddy Heald. And yet, I also told you before the year started, this was a very shrewd move by a shrewd operator in LeBron James because Russ gives him a double-edged sword. If he could actually win a championship this year with Russell Westbrook, people would go crazy. To me, it would elevate LeBron into the GOAT conversation. You say he's already the GOAT, I say he's the phony GOAT, but it would elevate him in, just from my side of the table. I would then have to seriously consider him in the GOAT conversation. Right. Because to overcome this disaster of a player, this first ballot Hall of Famer, That's who can't is. shoot, can't pass, has no feel for basketball. <laughs> He's just a triple double machine. If you could overcome that, right? Ah, I, I'm in awe. I'm genuflecting over here. I, I'm not yes. worthy for LeBron. But you're asking okay? you asking him to overcome a lot, Skip, because he still is going to have to play well. By by, and, and now you got to overcome the other team and a guy on your own team. I agree. But if you can't, it maybe it's injuries, whatever attrition, age, whatever. But if you can't pull it off. You're also shrewd enough to know that Russell Westbrook will be the ultimate scapegoat for the quote unquote goat because Laker Nation is already, he, he talk about in the crosshairs, <sighs> Russell Westbrook, he, he is begging to be the scapegoat this year. He, he is. He's I, been terrible. I, I know he has, but, but it's easy for Laker Nation, it's easy for Shannon Sharp, La Shannon Sharp, to say it's his fault, right? No, no Skip, it's not, it's not his fault. LeBron, LeBron has been nicked basically from, from jump. Uh, Russ has been terrible. AD stays nicked. So, you know, LeBron says, you know, the practice court, but they can't get on the practice court because LeBron's hurt. Yep. And then how much can AD practice when he's dealing with a knee, dealing with a shoulder, dealing with stomach issues? And Russ is just all over the place. Skip, it, it, it's not, it was never, it's, Russ is only a fit for him and four other dudes that's really not going anywhere. Yep. But if you try to win a championship, that's not the guy. Okay, so just for the record, already, I know we're still early in the season, yeah. Russ is running away with the turnover lead in the NBA. Yeah. Number one by far. And it's going to get worse because if LeBron's not there to take the ball out of his hands, yep. guess what? Can he overcome it by making free throws? No, he's making, Russell Westbrook is making 63% of his free throws. That ranks 100th of 103 players. What? Mm -hmm. That's this is your point guard. Yeah, what about threes? Okay, how about threes? Uh, he's making 26.8%. That ranks 141st of 154 players. Horrendously Damn, who bad. Who the 13 guys shooting worse well, than I him? Know. I know. I, I didn't look, but it's, that, that's how bad he <laughs> yeah. is. And yet, from the floor, is it any better? No. Well, no, he's, he's only 41.8% from the floor. This is a man who can drive it and dunk it and lay it off the glass mm -hmm. and score fairly easily at the rim. Man, you just showed me three of that montage you had put together. You showed me, you showed me three air balls, and, yep. they were, and a lot of them were from two. From two. So 41.8%. That ranks 101st of 138 NBA players. It's horrendously bad. When I nicknamed him long ago Westbrook, it has never applied any better than it applies right, right now because 
He is completely out of control as a shooter and a passer. Skip, you might could come overcome a guy that turned the ball over. You might could overcome a guy that doesn't shoot the three or doesn't shoot from the field well. But if you, that guy, is the same guy that turns it over, that doesn't, that's not efficient, how do you overcome that? when the guy plays that many minutes. Because, Skip, if the guy's a, is a role player, you can, like, reduce his minutes. Russ is a starter. Russ plays 35 minutes. So you know, on, on average, he's going to turn the ball over about five times a game. Yep. You know, on average, he's going to shoot less than 43 44% on average. Okay. If you're lucky, you'll get one game out of every 10 where he shoots 50% from three. But more times than not, He's going to be in the low 30s mm -hmm. to the 20s. Okay. What did I tell you when Kevin Durant left Oklahoma City for Golden State? Hell, he joined I'm forces. I, I told you that a source very close to Kevin told me he decided going into year 10, he cannot win a championship with Russell Westbrook as his primary decision maker on offense. Well, I'm mad at KD now. Okay. Because he waited that damn long. Well, there you go. It, it took him 10, 11 years to realize that. He should have realized that in year six. But he tried and tried, he tried. and tried. KD, I'm sorry. Bro, you tried. I don't know how you did it. Okay. And then what happened? Then Russ goes to James Harden and James says, I, I, I'm sorry. I can't what take this. What y'all want me to do with that? I'm out. I yeah. can't do it. And then... There's the whole Oklahoma City experience with, with obviously, Paul George. Right. And then there was Kawhi, and he wanted no part of Westbrook. And it, he's been rejected by so many stars in the league that LeBron said, well, watch this. I can do this. And maybe he can. But, A, LeBron's going to have to get healthy. Right? You can't, Skip, how are you going to get healthy? I mean, you can't get no sleep at night. The one thing that, that goes to health and recovering from an injury is rest. That man mind can't shut his mind off like, damn, I got Russ on my team. That's Turning the true. ball over, yeah. shooting wild shots, doing all this other stuff. He can't get proper rest. What did I tell you from the start? There's only one way to utilize what he does best, and it's in the Ginobili role coming off the bench. But there's no way Russell Westbrook's going to sit still for that. Well, how about the, the, no, the best role was to not have him on the team. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's the best yeah. role for him, for the Lakers. A terrible the, fit. But I don't know what we do now. You got to try to get up. But... Who gonna trade for Russ at the deadline? Nobody. Who who wants this? Unless you're just a really bad team who needs a sideshow, right. because he's averaged triple doubles for the last five years, which is something we never thought we would see. And because of that, he gets a pass for all the horrendous passes right. he throws. Can you imagine? I mean, Buddy Hill coming off the bench giving you like 20, 22 a night. So imagine if you had Melo and Buddy. Well, it's, we're broad at AD. Yeah, it's why I tweeted before the year started. I can't wait to see LaBrick and Westbrick launching threes from the Laker backcourt. And it's here and it's happening and it's fun for me to watch and miserable for you to watch. It is very miserable. Yeah, it's very miserable. And it doesn't seem like it's getting any better anytime soon. No, nope. because LeBron out for the foreseeable future. And that's the worst thing can happen. Is that Russ, when they fall behind, he starts going into hero mode like he's in Oklahoma City. That's the worst thing that could happen. Mm. And I'm watching that that Saturday. I'm like, <laughs> one for 13? Ooh, mm. I'm worried about his injury, too. I feel like, oh, that's what AD, AD stomach fine. Yeah. AD was just watching that from the side, like, like oh, man, I already see where this is headed. Yeah, I'm going to sit this one out. I'm not Seriously, it. maybe yeah. he just said, I, I can't. I can see where this is going. Yeah. <sighs> no mercy. Jordan Love made his starting debut for the Packers yesterday, throwing one touchdown and one interception in a 13-7 loss against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Green Bay head coach Matt LaFleur says Love's struggles fall on him, while Aaron Jones gave the QB a vote of confidence, saying, quote, he's going to continue to fight, he's going to keep grinding, and he is a true leader. So, Shannon, give Jordan Love a letter grade for this debut. Incomplete. He struggles, Skip. He's a young player. He took no snaps last year, even though he's not a rookie, Skip. He mm -hmm. took no snaps last year. Only got a handful of reps this year. The blowout against New Orleans, I think he might have played a few other snaps here and there, Skip. But he hadn't played anything. And it's not, look, mm -hmm. I understand that Kansas City doesn't have the greatest defense, but starting mm -hmm. a, a road game in a hostile environment, although the team isn't very good defensively, uh, tells you a lot. But they gave him some looks that you didn't expect because they're, they're not a zero blitz team. <laughs> but you know, Skip, a young guy, 
Oh, yeah, I'm going I'm to dial it up on him. Mm. I'm going to dial it. I don't know why they keep putting Sorensen in the game, Skip. <laughs> Skip, how does, he, every, how does every time he, he get into the game? He finally got one, and it was on that guy. <laughs> Skip, how yeah. does it's like? You, Can we see that touchdown pass quickly? <laughs> Skip, it's like baseball. You know, you get a new outfielder Shoot, and the Lassard. ball find it. Yeah. Look at it. This Lassard. is him. He, first of all, he almost falls. And nice tackle. Nice tackle. Yeah. I, I don't know how he keeps his job. I think Andy loves him. Andy or, or, or uh, Spags. Spags, they just love him. He plays hard. Okay, right. for, the, for the other team. <laughs> but, Skip, look, they were 2-12 or 12 on third down. You didn't really get an opportunity to, to, to get a rhythm because that's how you get your rhythm is yep. staying on the field for a, couple <laughs> of dri- you know, for a couple of drives, stringing together seven, eight, nine, ten plays so you can get a rhythm. You keep going three and out, three and out, three and mm-hmm. out. Skip, it's hard mm-hmm. to maintain a ry- rhythm, especially if you're a young quarterback. Mm. But, Skip, look. None of these guys, and we've seen even, uh, uh, we've seen Zach Wilson, we've seen Trevor Lawrence, we've seen some of these guys. We saw uh, Trey Lance. They struggle, and it's a struggle. It's not going to be pretty. You're not going to go out there like, oh, but we saw him in college. Man, college is a vastly different thing than what's going to happen for you as a quarterback (laughs) in the NFL. I gave him an incomplete skip. I think the thing is he can be good, but like you said, he's going to have to get his feet wet, and he's going to have to have a couple of games like this because – I know everybody thinks Aaron Rodgers was just like this his first game he stepped on the field, but he wasn't. Mm. Most quarterbacks struggle, unless you're Patrick Mahomes <clears throat> or Dan Marino. But for the most part, Skip, young quarterbacks struggle their first time out. To your first point, I cannot think of a worse environment into which to throw a young quarterback <laughs> trying to overcome Aaron Rodgers right. in his first ever start on the road no. at Kansas City. <laughs> You know that stadium. I do. You know the decibel level. Yes. You know that it completely eliminates your ability to audible at the line Mm -hmm. of scrimmage. Right. You know that it gets so loud, it makes your head hurt. It makes your eyes cross. For a while, I I think he was completely overwhelmed by by the energy the crowd was generating Mm -hmm. against him. Right. And it took him a while until the fourth quarter. And once the fourth quarter came, he started to get his sea legs underneath him. Mm -hmm. And he started to actually resemble a real live quarterback to me. And I liked his poise. And I liked much of his decision making in the fourth quarter. And remember, up to that point, they had blown two field goals. Right. So if, if you gave him, if if Mason Crossbar, as I call him, if he'd hit the 40-yarder and they hadn't gotten the other one blocked... It, it could have had a whole different feel to it in the fourth quarter because those were the six points by which they end up losing the game, That's right? That's correct. Okay, so before I get to how he played down the stretch, let's go to the very end first because your guy, my homeboy, he finally made one Mahomesian play. Yeah. And it was the last play of the game, and this iced the game where he, he, gets bolt, he has to bolt the pocket, he's getting chased on the run, throws it on the fly and found Tyreek who uncovered on the play right. and actually found a little soft spot for 13 yards, and that was his play of the game. And he knew it, too, because that iced it. Right. That killed the clock. Well, he didn't make any other plays because the truth is this kid out-yardaged him. I, mm-hmm. I can't – again, Jordan Love – 190 passing yards to 166 for Patrick Mahomes. Man, at one point in time, Skip, I saw, I think Mahomes was like 14 or 23 for like 70 yards. I'm like, what? (laughs) What? So finally, Jordan Love started to get into some rhythm. And by the way, his defense was backing him up. Oh, yeah, his defense played. And and listen, where did these guys come from? Chris Barnes and and Devondre Campbell? They're, they're like Micah Parsons at yeah, linebacker. Yeah, the linebackers have been playing and really Chris, well. Chris Barnes is undrafted out of UCLA, and Devondre bounced around. He's a four and fourth round pick, I think, of the Falcons. Mm-hmm. And that they had taken him off the scrap heap. And, and look at, they're all over the field. Yep. That they are playing like hell bent, where, where they are attacking. Right. And they kept them in the game. They did. So now it's up to the kid to start to play. And he finally hit a pass on a third and 10 play from the 47. This is 742 left in the game. And I'm not saying it's a great pass, but if we can see it to Randall Cobb, and he did much of the work himself. But this is a big third and 10, and he had to step up through the rush and get it to Cobb. who fought, And, and that, that got him started. Right. That actually created a little bit of momentum. Then Aaron Jones gets nine yards on a third and six, and then we got the touchdown pass, which we just saw. So the point is, uh, my bottom line for him, I'm going to give him a C-plus because of degree of difficulty. 
and because I started to see flashes. And then I read a flash after the game because our man Jarrett Bell was there for USA Today to cover the game. And after the game, Frank Clark, who, who doesn't sugarcoat, right. he told Jarrett Bell, and I'm going to read you the quote. This is of Jordan Love. He said, eventually, I feel like he's going to be a star in this league someday. Now, that's a powerful comment, right. and I don't yeah. think he's laying it on thick. Right. And his point was, there was one play that caught his eye because he was involved in it, and it was 8.27 left in the fourth quarter. It winds up being a minus one yard completion of Mercedes Lewis. Here it is. But you can see him escape and escape Frank Clark and throw it to Mercedes for a right. is, is it actually wasn't a fact. yard loss. But he, he escaped the sack twice, and they were impressed with his strength and his pocket mobility. Right. And he didn't panic. He didn't succumb. He, he didn't do a Matthew Stafford and throw it to the wrong player, <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly. And that had potential. Yep. So th th that's the play that caught Frank Clark's eye because he was involved in it. He said, I, I think this has got some right. potential here. Not saying he's Patrick Mahomes or anybody else, but he's got a chance to play. And remember, those are some big shoes to fill, yeah. man. Skip, but you Ooh. know, if Aaron Rodgers played, they'd oh, be canceled they 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 about 14, 17 well, well, points. Well, especially with the way the defense played because that defense is really coming on strong. So I think this thing, that's what's promising yep. because you're going to get Aaron back at some point in time and the defense says, okay, if we can just keep playing like this, we know with the offense with Devontae and Aaron Jones and yep. Aaron Rodgers and Lazard, Skip, they, got the, they, they, they can be a dangerous team yep. because it's going to come down. Your defense is going to probably have to make a stand. No matter who you face, be it the Bucs, be it the Rams, be it the Cowboys, the Packers, your deep Arizona, your defense is going to have to make a stand at one point in time in the game. They are capable. They look good yep. yesterday. They look, they look really good yesterday. Yep. No mercy. Sunday on Fox, Zeke and the Cowboys take on Matt Ryan and the Falcons, or the Vikings take on Justin Herbert and the Chargers. So check local listings for the game in your area. Only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Speaking of those Cowboys, they took an unexpected loss yesterday, but they weren't the only team to get upset. The Bills lost to the Jaguars 9-6. to The Rams fell to the Derrick henry list Titans at home. And the Raiders got shocked by the New York Giants. So, Shannon, after a wild day of games, who's the best team, in your opinion, right now in the NFC and in the AFC? Skip, um, I'm going to go with the Cardinals. Um, I, I think what they've been able to do, yeah, they had a very, that, that loss that they had at Green Bay, they really should have won that ball game, Skip. And they would be they would be undefeated. But to go on the road and beat San Francisco in the fashion in which they did that yesterday, that really impressed me. Mm. Now they're still, even though I have them number one, um, the Bucks and the Rams are right there. Cowboys a little distant, little, little behind those teams. Mm. But I think they're really there. When you can win the game without your starting quarterback, your best receiver, it's, and you go on the road, it's incredible. I don't know how they did that. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm going to take them and. Their defense is is, is, is really good. Mm -hmm. In the AFC, Skip, I would put the Titans at one if Derrick Henry was there. I agree. But since he's not, I'm going to roll with the Ravens. Mm. Um, even though they went to overtime, they only, that defense only gave up 318 yards with an overtime to Minnesota with Cousins, with those two receivers, with Dalvin Cook. So I think that's very, very impressive. But it's... Like I said, Skip, now, I mean, with Jacksonville losing to, excuse me, with Jacksonville beating Buffalo and Cincinnati's taking a step back, yep. Pittsburgh might be lurking, but I'm going to go with the Ravens. I'm going to say Ravens in the AFC, I'm going to go mm. the Cards in the NFC. Okay, I'm going to start with Baltimore. Okay. They keep pulling games out of the fire right and left because <laughs> that quarterback will not be denied. He, he I've never seen anything like it before. He does refuse to lose. Yep. He will will it. <laughs> Somehow, some way, if it's legs or arm, he will will them to victory, even if it goes to the wire, and it almost always goes right. to the wire, right? Yep. What game did they lose at? Raiders, it's an overtime, yeah. right? So and look, he's about to win that one and then gets the ball knocked out. Got the ball knocked out. So I'm, I'm going to give you Baltimore because th that is highly impressive. I, it, it's hard for me to buy completely into Arizona because there's still one team lurking in the NFC that is now shockingly completely off radar. It's a team that had a bye this past mm -hmm. week. It's the team that I picked to win it all because the quarterback is still winning the MVP race as we speak. Mm -hmm. And that's Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. And 
off their buy last year. What did they do? They took off right. because he doesn't go anywhere. He goes to school. And he takes everybody else to school, and they clean it up and clean it out and start over. And if he gets Gronk and A.B. back, as I think he will, coming off the bye, and if they can get Carlton Davis and Murphy Bunting back at corner, they're poised for takeoff. So I'm not backing off the fact I still think they're the best team. Okay. And on the other side, I'm not backing off my preseason pick either because I believe the Cleveland Browns are poised for takeoff. Okay. The Odell cloud has lifted. I got nothing against him. I like him. I know you know him. Mm -hmm. I know you've counseled him. You've, you've mentored him. And I hope he finds a new home somewhere. The pressure is mounting on Odell because wherever he goes now, people are going to say, okay, show us. Right. You got to go yeah, now. Yeah. He understands that. Okay. And, and he should. But it, for whatever crazy reason, I think Baker just loved him too much, and they could not click and connect because at first Baker became too Odell-centric, conscious, and he forced the ball to Odell, and then Baker unraveled. And once Odell was gone last year, Baker took off. And I think he's going to take off again, as he showed you he can yesterday. They have a very difficult game at New England, but I think they're going to win it. Then they get the Lions at home, and then oddly, they have at Baltimore, by and Baltimore again. Right. Well, that's the... The guts of the schedule is yeah. right there. Those two games. That's probably right? going to be for the division. That'll also. be for the division right there. And then they still have the Raiders. They have to go to Green Bay, and they, they have to go Pittsburgh to Pittsburgh. Again, right? They have to go to Pittsburgh and play the Bengals at home. So it, it, it doesn't get any easier. Right. I just think they're a really quality team, especially on defense. And listen, that Greg Newsom kid that they drafted at the bottom of the first round, twenty yeah. sixth yeah. overall. Mm -hmm. He stood tall uh -huh. yesterday because Greedy Williams was out, was out with a banged-up shoulder. And Greg Newsom said, I got this. Right. And he, he was in the middle of it all day long. Tampa Bay is going to win out. It's going to start at Washington. Again, I said they're going to go 17-0. But, I, right. you know, again, but when I look down the rest of it, it's at Washington. It's New York Giants. It's at Indy. It's Atlanta. Bills in, in, at home. Indy's in, in pretty good. Indy's in, in better. Okay. Indy's defense is better that, than That may think. be their toughest yes, game. You, I agree. you thought it might be the Bills. But right. I, I, I'm just not sold on the Bills, but they have to play at Tampa. I think the Bills overlooked Jacksonville. Maybe, maybe they did. And then it's Saints at uh, Carolina Atlanta. and then Jets and at Carolina. So, uh, I mean, Carolina at home. So, so it's they should be able to win all these games. And then they're going to be back in the driver's seat. Arizona good. Yeah. If Kyler Murray can come back here with that hamstring for D Hop skip. Yeah. Uh, the sure offense. I got Connor's it running it. Today. No, he is. He, um, he was a star yesterday. <laughs> no mercy. Uh, guys, after losing a fumble on a sack yesterday, Mac Jones grabbed Panthers defense bed Brian Burns' foot while the ball was loose. And following the game, Carolina linebacker Asan Reddick called out the Patriots rookie, saying the play was, quote, completely Dirty. Shannon, was this a dirty play? I disagree. Mm. I think he's trying to hold he's trying to hold Brian Burns from going to get the football. The last thing I want to have happen, Skip, you hit me in my back, I fumble the football, and the ball is scrap in the scrum, and all of a sudden you get up and get it. I'm just gonna prevent you from getting the football. That's all I'm trying to do. Maybe one of my guys can fall on it. Mm. I'm just not gonna let allow you to go jump on the is ball. Is it illegal? No, it's not illegal. No. To grab a guy and hold on no. to him? Skip, we see that all the time. With the, the defender against you, you fumble the ball. I'm gonna hold you because I don't want you to get it. Skip, now all of a sudden, I'm a defender. Man, I saw this as dirty and dangerous because no. Brian Burns had to leave the game because it twisted his ankle, right. and then he tried to come back and hurt that same twisted ankle again. It was born of desperation and frustration, and it did show that Mac Jones has got a little edge to him, but I consider that dirty edge. I think the thing is when Brian was trying to get away, Skip, and you know when you're trying to get it, it wasn't like Mac Jones was twisting. Now, Skip, we've seen where guys actually roll and twist the guy's ankle, kind of like what Vontaze Burfick did to Ben mm -hmm. Roethlisberger. That was dirty. Yeah. He's just just trying to prevent it. If Brian Burns does not try to twist and roll to get his mm. ankle free, mm. Mac Jones is just going to hold him. Mm. But in the process of him twisting, trying to get away, Skip, I did not think this was dirty play mm. because that's what I would have done if I was the form of the ball. Oh, you're not going to get that recovery. You're, you're not going to grab him. That, that's that's face mask. That's a flag to me. Face that's mask, a big old yellow collar. flag. Yes, you're huh? not getting the football. You ever see Tom Brady try to grab a line? No, Tom Brady football. don't do anything. All he do is fall down. <laughs> he don't do All nothing. All right, Skip Shannon, great stuff today. We're back <laughs> at the same time tomorrow. The herd, call and enjoy. Lots to say next. Stick around.